Director John Guidi is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands as Columbia is less than nine minutes away from beginning a two and a half week mission of life and microgravity experiments, taking full scientific advantage of the effects of microgravity in space. KLTOTC, configure fuel cell essential bus source switches. Hey, Pilot Kevin Kriegel is now flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. Coming up next will be the orbiter access arm being retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. And we see first motion of the OAA retract, which is beginning at this point. MS2OTC, channel 019, TV power switch on. MS2, that's complete. T-minus seven minutes and counting. JRPS OTC, start APU and hydraulic script start recorder. JRPS copies is verified. PLT OTC, perform APU pre start. Work. Orbiter test conductor Roberto Ryrick has given pilot Kevin Kriegel the go ahead to perform the auxiliary power unit pre start procedure. The pilot is setting the switches in the cockpit to the ready to start configuration at this time. OTC, PLT, APU, pre-starts complete, three great talkbacks. The next event will be the activation of the APUs that will come up in just about 20 seconds. And we have a go for auxiliary LT power LT unit start. Perform AP start. CLT and work. CDIOTC reconfigure heater. The launch team has terminated CDI liquid oxygen okay. replenish to the external tank, and the team is now initiating locks drain back. Pilot Kevin Kriegel has reported that the APU activation is complete. The main fuel valve heaters on the three shuttle main engines have been turned on in preparation for launch. Final purge sequences of the main engines is now underway. T minus four minutes and counting.
A final test of the flight control services is now being conducted. This is a program pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight control surfaces. And final error surface checks of the orbiter's aerial surfaces are being completed. And this is verifying the orbiter's hydraulic systems. And the main engines are being gibbled for a final test before launch. T minus three minutes and counting. And all is going well for today's launch. This mission carries a crew of seven. And in the payload bay rests the Life and, life and Microgravity Space Lab. And final pressurization of the liquid oxygen tank located inside the external tank is underway. CLTOTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. Then work. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Inside this uh, tank is about 500,000 gallons of super cold liquid fuels that run the orbiter's three main engines. Flight crew, OTC, close them off your visors and initiate O2 flow. Have a great flight and have more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Thanks a lot, brother. We got the visors down to pseudo two on them, and we are going to have a good one. Launch operations continue on schedule. Today is the Space Shuttle Columbia. Soon we'll begin its 17-day international mission to conduct life and material science experiments in space. T-minus 90 seconds and counting. T minus one minute, 15 seconds. T minus one minute and counting. Everything is still looking good for the launch of Columbia from Kennedy Space Center this morning. This will be an on-time launch at 10.49 a.m. Eastern Time. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia on an international life science and microgravity mission. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia. Houston Columbia is in the roll program. Roger roll, Columbia. Columbia completes the roll to place the shuttle in a head down wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. 23 seconds into the flight. Columbia's three liquid fuel main engines will soon begin to throttle back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance. That will dampen the stress on the shuttle's aero surfaces as it breaks through the sound barrier. Forty-five seconds into the flight, Columbia already traveling at 711 miles per hour, two and a half miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. The three engines now beginning to rev up to full throttle, 104% of rated performance. Those main engines, along with Columbia's three fuel cells and three hydraulic power units, all functioning normally.
Columbia, go at throttle up. Columbia, go at throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Tom Hendricks. He's seated on the flight deck along with pilot Kevin Kriegel. They flew together a year ago on STS-70. They're joined on the flight deck by payload commander and flight engineer Susan Helms and mission specialist Rick Linehan. Down on the mid-deck, mission specialist Chuck Brady along with payload specialists Jean-Jacques Favier and Bob Thursk. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Columbia traveling at 2,400 miles per hour, more than 18 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 22 miles in altitude, all systems functioning normally. Booster officer here in Mission Control standing by for solid rocket booster shutdown and separation about five seconds from now. Booster officer confirms a normal solid rocket booster separation standing by for the performance call. Columbia, performance nominal. Nominal performance. Columbia's onboard computers now converging in the proper guidance and trajectory to steer Columbia towards the proper keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. Everything going well so far in the first two and a half minutes of Columbia's 20th voyage. Columbia, two-engine Ben Guerrier. Two-engine Ben Guerrier. That call from spacecraft communicator Blaine Hammond indicating that if one main engine should fail, Columbia still could make a transoceanic abort to Ben Guerrier, Morocco. However, all three main engines continue to track right down the pike. Three minutes, five seconds into the flight. Columbia traveling at 3,600 miles an hour, more than 79 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center more than 50 miles in altitude. About 40 seconds from now, Columbia will be coming up on the point of negative return where the shuttle will be too far downrange and too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Less than five minutes of powered flight remaining. Columbia 131 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling at a speed of 4,700 miles an hour. Columbia, negative return. Negative return, Houston. Columbia's three liquid fuel main engines draining a half a ton of fuel per second from its external fuel tank. The Hydraulic power units and power producing fuel cells all functioning normally so far for Columbia. Four and a half minutes into the flight, halfway through powered flight, Columbia traveling at 5,600 miles per hour. Now some 67 miles in altitude, almost 200 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Everything proceeding normally so far in the early minutes of the fifth shuttle mission of the year. Columbia arcing out in a northeasterly trajectory, 39 degrees inclined to either side of the equator for the start of 16 or 17 days of microgravity science. More than five minutes into the flight, everything going well so far. Columbia 245 miles downrange, 70 miles in altitude, traveling at 6,700 miles per hour. Columbia, press to ATO. Press to ATO. Columbia, single engine ops 3, 109. Single engine ops 3, 109. Columbia, press to Miko. Press to Miko. That call from spacecraft communicator Blaine Hammond indicating that at the six minute mark into the flight, should one engine fail, Columbia could still make normal cutoff targets for main engine cutoff to begin its mission. However, all three main engines continue to track normally. Columbia traveling at 8,500 miles an hour, 360 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Columbia, single engine Ben Guerrier, 104. Copy that, Houston. 
That call now indicating that if two main engines should fail, a transoceanic abort is still possible to Ben Gurir, Morocco. However, all three main engines, as well as the auxiliary power units and three fuel cells, functioning uh, by the book this morning. Two minutes to go in powered flight. Columbia and its seven astronauts en route to begin their mission. All systems aboard the orbiter in good shape. that if two engines should fail, normal cutoff targets for main engine cutoff could still be achieved through the uh, singular power of a remaining main engine. However, all three main engines continue to function in good shape. Seven and a half minutes into the flight, Columbia's main engines soon will be throttled down once again to limit the stress on the shuttle and its seven astronauts to that of three times the effect of gravity. Columbia currently traveling at a speed of more than four miles a second. Columbia currently 70 miles in altitude, traveling at more than 14,000 miles an hour, 704 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Eight minutes into the flight, standing by for main engine cutoff. That call will come from the booster officer here in Mission Control. Booster officer reports a normal main engine cutoff. Standing by for external tank separation, which has been initiated. Columbia Houston, nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required. You have a go for the ET photo DTO. That's in progress. Mission Specialist Rick Lenahan will now break out a camera to photograph Columbia's external tank as it drops away. That external tank will uh, re-enter the Earth's atmosphere soon and burn up over the Indian Ocean. A normal climb to orbit this morning for Columbia to begin the 78th mission in shuttle program history, the 20th for Columbia.